Zoroaster, Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra, Zarathustra Spitama, or Ashu Zarathustra, was an ancient Iranian prophet, spiritual leader and ethical philosopher who taught a spiritual philosophy of self-realization and realization of the divine. His teachings challenged the existing traditions of the Indo-Iranian religion and later developed into the religion of Mazda Yasna or Zoroastrianism. He inaugurated a movement that eventually became the dominant religion in ancient Iran. He was a native speaker of Old Avestan and lived in the eastern part of the Iranian plateau, but his exact birthplace is uncertain. There is no scholarly consensus on when he lived. However, Approximating using linguistic and sociocultural evidence allows for dating to somewhere in the second millennium BCE. This is done by estimating the period in which the Old Avestan language was spoken, the period in which the Proto-Indo-Iranian religion was practiced, and correlation between the burial practice described in the goddess with the archaeological Yez culture. However, other scholars still date him in the 7th and 6th century BCE as a near contemporary of Cyrus the Great and Darius I. Zoroastrianism eventually became the official religion of ancient Persia and its distant subdivisions from the 6th century BCE at the 7th century CE. Zoroaster is credited with authorship of the goddess as well as the Yezna Heptang Hadi, hymns composed in his native dialect, Old Avestan, and which comprise the core of Zoroastrian thinking. Most of his life is known from these texts. By any modern standard of historiography, no evidence can place him into a fixed period, and the historicization surrounding him may be a part of a trend from before the 10th century that historicized legends and myths. Zoroaster's name in his native language, Avestan, was probably Zarathata Ustra. His English name, Zoroaster, derives from a later Greek transcription, Zoroasters and in Plato's first Alcibiades. This form appears subsequently in the Latin and, in later Greek orthographies, as Zeta Omega Rho Omicron Sigma Tau Rho Iota Sigma Zoroastris. The Greek form of the name appears to be based on a phonetic transliteration or semantic substitution of Avestan Zara Theta, with the Greek Zeta Omega Rho Sigma Zoros and the Avestan Ustra with Sigma Tau Rho Omicron Nu Astron. In Avestan, Zara Theta Ustra is generally accepted to derive from an old Iranian Zaratustra. The element half of the name is thought to be the Indo-Iranian root for camel, with the entire name meaning he who can manage camels. Reconstructions from later Iranian languages, particularly from the Middle Persian Sardusht, which is the form that the name took in the 9th to 12th century Zoroastrian texts, suggest that Zarathustra might be a zero-grade form of Zarathustra. Subject then to whether Zarathata Ustra derives from Zarathustra or from Zarathustra, several interpretations have been proposed. If Zarathustra is the original form, it may mean with old slash aging camels, related to Avestic Zarant. The interpretation of the Theta should have Avestan Zarat or Zarat as a development from it. Why this is not so for Zarathata Ustra has not yet been determined. Notwithstanding the phonetic irregularity, that Avestan Zarathata Ustra with its Theta was linguistically an actual form is shown by later attestations reflecting the same basis. All present day, Iranian language variants of his name derive from the Middle Iranian variants of Zar Theta Ost, which, in turn, all reflect Avestan's fricative, Theta. In Middle Persian, the name is Zardust, in Parthian Zarhust, in Manichaean Middle Persian Zardrwst, in Early New Persian Zardust, and in Modern, the name is Zartash. There is no consensus on the dating of Zoroaster, the Avesta gives no direct information about it. While historical sources are conflicting. Some scholars base their date reconstruction on the Proto Indo Iranian language and Proto Indo Iranian religion, and thus it is considered to have been someplace in northeastern Iran in some time between 1500 and 500 BCE. Some scholars, such as Mary Boyce, used linguistic and socio cultural evidence to place Zoroaster between 1500 and 1000 BCE. The basis of this theory is primarily proposed on linguistic similarities between the Old Avestan language of the Zoroastrian goddess and the Sanskrit of the Rig Veda, a collection of early Vedic hymns. Both texts are considered to have a common archaic Indo-Iranian origin. The goddess portray an ancient stone Bronze Age bipartite society of warrior herdsmen and priests, and thus it is implausible that the goddess and Rig Veda could have been composed more than a few centuries apart. These scholars suggest that Zoroaster lived in an isolated tribe or composed the goddess before the 1200 to 1000 BCE migration by the Iranians from the steppe to the Iranian plateau. The shortfall of the argument is the vague comparison, and the archaic language of goddess does not necessarily indicate time difference. 
Other scholars propose a period between 7th and 6th century, for example, circa 650 to 600 BCE or 559 to 522 BCE. The latest possible date is the mid 6th century, at the time of the Caymanid Empire's Darius I, or his predecessor Cyrus the Great. This date gains credence mainly on the thesis that certain figures must be based on historical facts, thus some have related the mythical Vishtespa with Darius I's father Vishtespa with the account on Zoroaster's life. However, in the Avesta it should not be ignored that Vishtespa's son became the ruler of the Persian Empire, Darius I would not neglect to include his patron father in the Behistun inscription. A different proposed conclusion is that Darius I's father was named in honor of the Zoroastrian patron, indicating possible Zoroastrian faith by Assames. Classical scholarship in the 6th to 4th century BCE believed he existed 6,000 years before Xerxes' the first invasion of Greece in 480 BCE, which is a possible misunderstanding of the Zoroastrian four cycles of 3,000 years i.e.12,000 years. This belief is recorded by Diogenes Laertius and variant readings could place it 600 years before Xerxes I, somewhere before 1000 BCE. However, Diogenes also mentions Hermodorus's belief that Zoroaster lived 5000 years before the Trojan War, which would mean he lived around 6200 BCE. The 10th century Suda, provides a date of 500 years before Plato in the late 10th century BCE. Pliny the Elder cited Eudexus who also placed his death 6000 years before Plato, circa 6300 BCE. Other pseudo-historical constructions are those of Aristoxenus who recorded Zerata's the Chaldean to have taught Pythagoras in Babylon, or lived at the time of mythological Ninus in Semiramis. According to Pliny the Elder, there were two Zoroasters. The first lived thousands of years ago, while the second accompanied Xerxes I in the invasion of Greece in 480 BCE. Some scholars propose that the chronological calculation for Zoroaster was developed by Persian Magi in the 4th century BCE, and as the early Greeks learned about him from the Achaemenids, this indicates they did not regard him as a contemporary of Cyrus the Great, but as a remote figure. Some later pseudo-historical and Zoroastrian sources place Zoroaster in the 6th century BCE, which coincided with the accounts by Amianus Marcellinus from 4th century CE. The traditional Zoroastrian date originates in the period immediately following Alexander the Great's conquest of the Achaemenid Empire in 330 BCE. The Seleucid rulers who gained power following Alexander's death instituted an age of Alexander as the new calendrical epoch. This did not appeal to the Zoroastrian priesthood who then attempted to establish an age of Zoroaster. To do so, they needed to establish when Zoroaster had lived which they accomplished by counting back the length of successive generations, until they concluded that Zoroaster must have lived 258 years before Alexander. This estimate then reappeared in the 9th to 12th century Arabic and Pahlavi texts of Zoroastrian tradition, like the 10th century Al-Masudi who cited a prophecy from a lost Avestan book in which Zoroaster foretold the empire's destruction in 300 years, but the religion would last for a thousand years. The birthplace of Zoroaster is also unknown, and the language of the goddess is not similar to the proposed northwestern and northeastern regional dialects of Persia. It is also suggested that he was born in one of the two areas and later lived in the other area. Yasna 9 and 17 cite the Daitya River in Aryan Amvaja as Zoroaster's home and the scene of his first appearance. The Avesta does not mention the Achaemenids or of any West Iranian tribes such as the Medes, Persians, or even Parthians. The fervor Dean Yasht refers to some Iranian peoples that are unknown in the Greek and Achaemenid sources about the 6th and 5th century B.C. Eastern Iran. The Vendadad contains 17 regional names, most of which are located in northeastern and eastern Iran. However, in Yasna 59.18, the Zarathadan Ostrodoma, or supreme head of the Zoroastrian priesthood, is said to reside in Raga. In the 9th to 12th century Middle Persian texts of Zoroastrian tradition, this Ragan with many other places appear as locations in western Iran. While the land of Media does not figure at all in the Avesta, the Bunda Hizn, or primordial creation, puts Raga in Media. However, in Avestan, Raga is simply a toponym meaning plain, hillside. Apart from these indications in Middle Persian sources that are open to interpretations, there are a number of other sources. The Greek and Latin sources are divided on the birthplace of Zarathustra. There are many Greek accounts of Zarathustra, referred usually as Persian or Perso-Median Zoroaster, Tejas located him in Bactria, Diodorus Siculus placed him among Ariaspi, 
Sif Alion and Justin suggest east of Greater Iran whereas Pliny and Origen suggest west of Iran as his birthplace. Moreover, they have the suggestion that there has been more than one Zoroaster. On the other hand, in post-Islamic sources Sharistani an Iranian writer originally from Sharistan, present-day Turkmenistan, proposed that Zoroaster's father was from Atrapatane and his mother was from Ray. Coming from a reputed scholar of religions, this was a serious blow for the various regions who all claimed that Zoroaster originated from their homelands, some of which then decided that Zoroaster must then have then been buried in their regions or composed his goddess there or preached there. Also Arabic sources of the same period in the same region of historical Persia consider Azerbaijan as the birthplace of Zarathustra. By the late 20th century, most scholars had settled on an origin in eastern Greater Iran. Noli proposed Sistan, Baluchistan is the homeland of Zoroastrianism, Fry voted for Bactria and Khwarezmia, Klopin suggests the Tidsan Delta in present-day Turkmenistan. Sarianidi considered the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex region as the native land of the Zoroastrians and, probably, of Zoroaster himself. Boyce includes the steps to the west from the Volga. The medieval from media hypothesis is no longer taken seriously, and Zayaner has even suggested that this was a Magi mediated issue to garner legitimacy, but this has been likewise rejected by Gershevich and others. The 2005 Encyclopedia Iranica article on the history of Zoroastrianism summarizes the issue with while there is general agreement that he did not live in western Iran, attempts to locate him in specific regions of eastern Iran, including Central Asia, remain tentative. Zoroaster is recorded as the son of Porozaspa of the Spideman or Spidamids family, and Dugdo, while his great-grandfather was Hikataspa. All the names appear appropriate of the nomadic tradition, as his father's means possessing grey horses, while his mother's is milkmaid. According to the tradition, he had four brothers, two older and two younger, whose names are given in much later Pahlavi work. His training for the priesthood probably started very early, around seven years of age. He became a priest probably around the age of 15, and according to the goddess, he gained knowledge from other teachers and personal experience from traveling when he left his parents at 20 years old. By the age of 30, he experienced a revelation during a spring festival. On the river bank, he saw a shining being, who revealed himself as Vohumana and taught him about Ahura Mazda and five other radiant figures. Zoroaster soon became aware of the existence of two primal spirits, the second being Angra Mainyu with opposing concepts of Asha and Druj. Thus he decided to spend his life teaching people to seek Asha. He received further revelations and saw a vision of the seven Amsha Spenta, and his teachings were collected in the Gaudas and the Avesta. He taught about free will, and opposed the use of the hallucinogenic homo plant in rituals, polytheism, over ritualizing religious ceremonies and animal sacrifices, as well an oppressive class system in Persia which earned him strong opposition among local authorities. Eventually. At the age of about 42, he received the patronage of Queen Huta Osa and a ruler named Vishtaspa, an early adherent of Zoroastrianism. Zoroaster's teaching about individual judgment, heaven and hell, the resurrection of the body, the last judgment, and everlasting life for the reunited soul and body, among other things, became borrowings in the Abrahamic religions, but they lost the context of the original teaching. According to the tradition, he lived for many years after the Vishtaspa conversion, managed to establish a faithful community, and married three times. His first two wives bore him three sons and three daughters. His third wife, Fravai, was childless. Zoroaster died when he was 77 years and 40 days old. The later Pahlavi sources like Shahnameh instead claim that an obscure conflict with Tuiria's people led to his death, murdered by a Karapa named Bradres. In the Goddess, Zoroaster sees the human condition as the mental struggle between Asa and Druj. The cardinal concept of Asa which is nuanced and only vaguely translatable, is at the foundation of all Zoroastrian doctrine, including that of Ahura Mazda, creation, existence and as the condition for free will. The purpose of humankind, like that of all other creation, is to sustain Asa. For humankind. This occurs through active participation in life and the exercise of constructive thoughts, words and deeds. Elements of Zoroastrian philosophy entered the West through their influence on Judaism and Middle Platonism and have been identified as one of the key early events in the development of philosophy. Among the classic Greek philosophers, Heraclitus is often referred to as inspired by Zoroaster's thinking. In 2005, 
The Oxford Dictionary of Philosophy ranked Zarathustra as first in the chronology of philosophers. Zarathustra's impact lingers today due in part to the system of rational ethics he founded called Mazdayezna. The word Mazdayezna is Avestan and is translated as worship of wisdom in English. The Encyclopedia Natural History claims that Zoroastrians later educated the Greeks who, starting with Pythagoras, used a similar term, philosophy, or love of wisdom to describe the search for ultimate truth. Zoroaster emphasized the freedom of the individual to choose right or wrong and individual responsibility for one's deeds. This personal choice to accept Hesa, or Arda, and shun Druj's one's own decision and not a dictate of Ahura Mazda. For Zarathustra, by thinking good thoughts, saying good words, and doing good deeds, we increase this divine force Asa or Arda in the world and in ourselves, celebrate the divine order, and we come a step closer on the everlasting road to being one with the Creator. Thus, we are not the slaves or servants of Ahura Mazda, but we can make a personal choice to be his co-workers, thereby refreshing the world in ourselves. A number of parallels have been drawn between Zoroastrian teachings and Islam. Such parallels include the evident similarities between Aim Shuspenta and the Archangel Gabriel, and the mention of Thamud and the Iram of the Pillars in the Quran. These may also indicate the vast influence of the Achaemenid Empire on the development of either religion. The Sabians, who believed in free will coincident with Zoroastrians, are also mentioned in the Quran. Like the Greeks of classical antiquity, Islamic tradition understands Zoroaster to be the founding prophet of the Magians. The 11th century court of Ibn Hazm contends that Kitabi of the book cannot apply in light of the Zoroastrian assertion that their books were destroyed by Alexander. Citing the authority of the 8th century al Kalbi. The 9th and 10th century Sunni historian Al-Tabari reports that Saradush bin Isfiman was an inhabitant of Israel and a servant of one of the disciples of Prophet Jeremiah. According to this tale, Zaradush defrauded his master, who cursed him, causing him to become leprous. The apostate Zaradush then eventually made his way to Balsh where he converted Bishtasbi, who in turn compelled his subjects to adopt the religion of the Magians. Recalling other tradition, Al-Tabari recounts that Zaradusht accompanied a Jewish prophet to Bishtasbi slash Vishtaspa. Upon their arrival, Zaradusht translated the sage's Hebrew teachings for the king and so convinced him to convert to the Magian religion. The 12th century heresiographer Al-Sharistani describes the Majusia into three sects, the Kayamarthia, the Zuruania and the Zaradushtia, among which Al-Sharistani asserts that only the last of the three were properly followers of Zoroaster. As regards the recognition of a prophet, Zoroaster has said, they ask you as to how should they recognize a prophet and believe him to be true in what he says, tell them what he knows the others do not, and he shall tell you even what lies hidden in your nature, he shall be able to tell you whatever you ask him and he shall perform such things which others cannot perform. When the companions of Muhammad, on invading Persia, came in contact with the Zoroastrian people and learned these teachings, they at once came to the conclusion that Zoroaster was really a divinely inspired prophet. Thus they accorded the same treatment to the Zoroastrian people which they did to other people of the book. Though the name of Zoroaster is not mentioned in the Quran, still he was regarded as one of those prophets whose names have not been mentioned in the Quran, for there is a verse in the Quran, and we did send apostles before thee, there are some of them that we have mentioned to thee and there are others whom we have not mentioned to thee. Accordingly, the Muslims treated the founder of Zoroastrianism as a true prophet and believed in his religion as they did in other inspired creeds, and thus according to the prophecy, protected the Zoroastrian religion. James Darmestator remarked in the translation of Santa Vesta, when Islam assimilated the Zoroastrians to the people of the book, it evinced a rare historical sense and solved the problem of the origin of Avesta. Shia view During the reign of the seventh Abbasid Caliph, al mamun Imam Ali al rida the great-grandson of Muhammad and a prominent Islamic scholar of his time, was summoned in court to debate with the high priests, scholars, philosophers, and theologians to test his knowledge on religion and jurisprudence. Among the summoned scholars was a Zoroastrian high priest. al rida questioned the priest on his beliefs saying, Tell me about Zoroaster, whom you claim is a prophet, what is your evidence for his prophethood? To which the response was we did not see him. But the tales of our ancestors' infirmage is that he had legalized for us what no other person before had made legal. Imam al Rida responded, This is the case with all other nations. Tales had come to them about what the prophets had accomplished, what Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad had all brought them, so why did you not believe in any of these prophets, having believed in Zoroaster, through the tales that came to you about him, 
informing that he brought forth what others did not. Ahmadi Muslims view Zoroaster as a prophet of God and describe the expressions of Ahura Mazda, the god of goodness, and Araman, the god of evil, as merely referring to the coexistence of forces of good and evil enabling humans to exercise free will. Mirza Tahir Ahmad, the fourth caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, in his book Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge and Truth views Zoroaster as prophet of God and describes such the expressions to be a concept which is similar to the concepts in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Manichaeism considered Zoroaster to be a figure in a line of prophets of which Mani was the culmination. Zoroaster's ethical dualism is, to an extent, incorporated in Mani's doctrine, which viewed the world as being locked in an epic battle between opposing force of good and evil. Manichaeanism also incorporated other elements of Zoroastrian tradition, particularly the names of supernatural beings, however, many of these other Zoroastrian elements are either not part of Zoroaster's own teachings or are used quite differently from how they are used in Zoroastrianism. Zoroaster appears in the Baha'i Faith as a manifestation of God, one of a line of prophets who have progressively revealed the Word of God to a gradually maturing humanity. Zoroaster thus shares an exalted station with Abraham. Moses, Krishna, Jesus, Muhammad, the Bab, and the founder of the Baha'i Faith, Baha'u'llah. Shoghi Effendi, the head of the Baha'i Faith in the first half of the 20th century, saw Baha'u'llah as the fulfillment of a post-Sassanid Zoroastrian prophecy that saw a return of Sassanid Emperor Brahm. Shoghi Effendi also stated that Zoroaster lived roughly 1,000 years before Jesus. The Greeks, in the Hellenistic sense of the term, had an understanding of Zoroaster as expressed by Plutarch, Diogenes Laertius, and Agathias that saw him, at the core, to be the prophet and founder of the religion of the Iranian peoples, Beck notes that the rest was mostly fantasy. Zoroaster was set in the ancient past, six to seven millennia before the Common Era, and was described as a king of Bactria or a Babylonian, and with a biography typical of a Neopythagorean sage, i.e. having a mission preceded by ascetic withdrawal and enlightenment. However, at first mentioned in the context of dualism, in Moralia, Plutarch presents Zoroaster as Eretris, not realizing the two to be the same, and he is described as a teacher of Pythagoras. Zoroaster has also been described as a sorcerer astrologer creator of both magic and astrology. Deriving from that image, and reinforcing it, was a mass of literature attributed to him and that circulated the Mediterranean world from the 3rd century BCE to the end of antiquity and beyond. The language of that literature was predominantly Greek, though at one stage or another various parts of it passed through Aramaic, Syriac, Coptic or Latin. Its ethos and cultural matrix was likewise Hellenistic, and the ascription of literature to sources beyond that political, cultural and temporal framework represents a bid for authority and a fount of legitimizing alien wisdom. Zoroaster and the Magi did not compose it, but their names sanctioned it. The attributions to exotic names conferred an authority of a remote and revelatory wisdom. Among the named works attributed to Zoroaster is a treatise on nature, which appears to have originally constituted four volumes. The framework is a retelling of Plato's myth of her, with Zoroaster taking the place of the original hero. While Porphyry imagined Pythagoras listening to Zoroaster's discourse, on nature has the sun in middle position, which was how it was understood in the 3rd century. In contrast, Plato's 4th century BCE version had the sun in second place above the moon. Ironically, Colotes accused Plato of plagiarizing Zoroaster, and Heraclides Ponticus wrote a text titled Zoroaster based on his perception of Zoroastrian philosophy, in order to express his disagreement with Platoon natural philosophy. With respect to substance and content and on nature only two facts are known, that it was crammed with astrological speculations, and that necessity was mentioned by name and that she was in the air. Pliny the Elder names Zoroaster as the inventor of magic. However, a principle of the division of labor appears to have spared Zoroaster most of the responsibility for introducing the dark arts to the Greek and Roman worlds. That dubious honor went to the fabulous Magus, Ostanes, to whom most of the pseudepigraphic magical literature was attributed. Although Pliny calls him the inventor of magic, the Roman does not provide a magician's persona for him. Moreover, the little magical teaching that is ascribed to Zoroaster is actually very late, with the very earliest example being from the 14th century. Association with astrology according to Roger Beck, were based on his Babylonian origin, and Zoroaster's Greek name was identified at first with star-worshipping and, with the so, even as the living star. 
Later, an even more elaborate mytho etymology evolved, Zoroaster died by the living flux of fire from the star which he himself had invoked, and even, that the stars killed him in revenge for having been restrained by him. The alternate Greek name for Zoroaster was Zeratris or Zeratis slash Zeratis slash Zeratos. Pythagoreans considered the mathematicians to have studied with Zoroaster in Babylonia. Lydus, in On the Months, attributes the creation of the seven day week to the Babylonians in the circle of Zoroaster and Hystaspes, and who did so because there were seven planets. The Sudas chapter on Astronomia notes that the Babylonians learned their astrology from Zoroaster. Lucian of Samosata, in Menippus 6, reports deciding to journey to Babylon to ask one of the Magi, Zoroaster's disciples and successors, for their opinion. While the division along the lines of Zoroaster slash astrology and Austin slash magic is an oversimplification, the descriptions do at least indicate what the works are not, they were not expressions of Zoroastrian doctrine, they were not even expressions of what the Greeks and Romans imagined the doctrines of Zoroastrianism to have been, emphases in the original. The assembled fragments do not even show noticeable commonality of outlook and teaching among the several authors who wrote under each name. Almost all Zoroastrian pseudepigrapha is now lost, and of the attested texts, with only one exception, only fragments have survived. Pliny's 2 nd or 3rd century attribution of 2 million lines to Zoroaster suggests that a formidable pseudepigraphic corpus once existed at the Library of Alexandria. This corpus can safely be assumed to be pseudepigrapha because no one before Pliny refers to literature by Zoroaster, and on the authority of the 2nd century Galen of Pergamon and from a 6th century commentator on Aristotle it is known that the acquisition policies of well-endowed royal libraries created a market for fabricating manuscripts of famous and ancient authors. The exception to the fragmentary evidence is a complete Coptic tractate titled Zostrianos discovered in the Nag Hammadi Library in 1945. A three-line cryptogram in the colophones following the 131-page treatise identified work as Words of Truth of Zostrianos. God of Truth, Logos. Words of Zoroaster. Invoking a God of Truth might seem Zoroastrian, but there is otherwise nothing noticeably Zoroastrian about the text and in content, style, ethos and intention, its affinities are entirely with the congeners among the Gnostic tractates. Another work circulating under the name of Zoroaster was the Asteroscopita, and which ran to five volumes. The title and fragments suggest that it was an astrological handbook, albeit a very varied one, for the making of predictions. A third text attributed to Zoroaster is On Virtue of Stones, of which nothing is known other than its extent and Thasudo Zoroaster sang it. Numerous other fragments preserved in the works of other authors are attributed to Zoroaster, but the titles of those books are not mentioned. These pseudepigraphic texts aside, some authors did draw on a few genuinely Zoroastrian ideas. The Oracles of Hystaspes, by Hystaspes, another prominent Magian pseudo-author, is a set of prophecies distinguished from other Zoroastrian pseudepigrapha in that it draws on real Zoroastrian sources. Some allusions are more difficult to assess, in the same text that attributes the invention of magic to Zoroaster, Pliny states that Zoroaster laughed in the day of his birth, although in an earlier place. Pliny had sworn in the name of Hercules that no child had ever done so before the 40th day from his birth. This notion of Zoroaster's laughter also appears in the 90th to 11th century texts of genuine Zoroastrian tradition, and for a time it was assumed that the origin of those myths lay with indigenous sources. Pliny also records that Zoroaster's head had pulsated so strongly that it repelled the hand when laid upon it, a presage of his future wisdom. The Iranians were, however, just as familiar with the Greek writers and the provenance of other descriptions are clear. For instance, Plutarch's description of its dualistic theologies reads thus, others call the better of Thesi God and his rival a demon, as, for example, Zoroaster the Magus, who lived, so they record, 5,000 years before the siege of Troy. He used to call the one Hormesis and the other Aramanius. Zoroaster was known as a sage, magician, and miracle worker in post-classical Western culture. Although almost nothing was known of his ideas until the late 18th century, his name was already associated with lost ancient wisdom. Statements by Sir Thomas Brown as early as 1643 are the earliest recorded references to Zoroaster in the English language. Enlightenment writers such as Voltaire promoted research into Zoroastrianism in the belief that it was a form of rational deism, preferable to Christianity. Zoroaster was the subject of the 1749 opera. Zoroaster, by Jean-Philippe Rameau. 
with the translation of the Avesta by Abraham Oncatil Duperon, Western scholarship of Zoroastrianism began. An early 19th century representation of Zoroaster derived from the portrait of a figure that appears in a 4th century sculpture at Takibistan in southwestern Iran. In E.T.A. Hoffman's novel, the mage Prosper Alpinus states that Professor Zoroaster was his teacher. In his seminal work also Shprak Zarathustra the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche uses the native Iranian name Zarathustra which has a significant meaning as he had used the familiar Greek-Latin name in his earlier works. It is believed that Nietzsche invents a characterization of Zarathustra as the mouthpiece for Nietzsche's own ideas against morality. Richard Strauss's Opus 30, inspired by Nietzsche's book, is also called also Shprak Zarathustra. Irish poet William Butler Yeats and his wife reportedly claimed to have contacted Zoroaster through automatic writing. A sculpture of Zoroaster by Edward Clark Potter, representing ancient Persian judicial wisdom and dating to 1896, towers over the Appellate Division Courthouse of New York State at East 25th Street and Madison Avenue in Manhattan. A sculpture of Zoroaster appears with other prominent religious figures on the south side of the exterior of Rockefeller Memorial Chapel on the campus of the University of Chicago. Although a few recent depictions of Zoroaster show the prophet performing some deed of legend, in general the portrayals merely present him in white vestments. He often is seen holding a bearsman, which is generally considered to be another symbol of priesthood, or with a book in hand, which may be interpreted to be the Avesta. Alternatively, he appears with a mace, the varza usually stylized as a steel rod crowned by a bull's head, that priests carry in their installation ceremony. In other depictions, he appears with a raised hand and thoughtfully lifted finger, as if to make a point. Zoroaster is rarely depicted as looking directly at the viewer, instead, he appears to be looking slightly upwards, as if beseeching. Zoroaster is almost always depicted with a beard, this along with other factors bearing similarities to 19th century portraits of Jesus. A common variant of the Zoroaster images derives from a Sassanid-era rock face carving. In this depiction at Takibistan, a figure is seen to preside over the coronation of Ardashir I or II. The figure is standing on a lotus, with a bearsman in hand and with a gloriole around his head. Until the 1920s, this figure was commonly thought to be a depiction of Zoroaster, but in recent years is more commonly interpreted to be a depiction of Mithridat among the most famous of the European depictions of Zoroaster is that of the figure in Raphael's 1509 The School of Athens. In it, Zoroaster and Ptolemy are having a discussion in the lower right corner. The prophet is holding a star-studded globe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.